In this segment, I'm going to remind you of the term alkene and what that means. And we're also going to go through how the concept of alkenes connects to the concept of hydrogen deficiency. So first things first, a reminder that when we are talking about hydrocarbons, that is molecules that have just carbons and hydrogens, we can break those down into a few different groups. One of those being the alkanes with the A and E suffix. And remember that alkanes have just carbon-carbon single bonds. Alkenes, which are going to be our focus here and for the next few segments where we'll be looking at how to synthesize alkenes. Alkenes have at least one carbon-carbon double bond. They could have more than one carbon-carbon double bond, such as the example molecule that I've drawn here at the left, which we call a diene because it has two alkene groups. And then the third type of hydrocarbon is the alkyne, which has at least one carbon-carbon triple bond, giving it the y and e suffix. There are also, additionally, our so-called aromatic molecules that have three alkene groups that are present within a ring. There's a series of alternating single and double bonds. That's a very special system because it's stabilized by resonance because we can delocalize those pi electrons around the entire ring. The focus of our next few segments is going to be on alkenes. And in this segment, what we're going to look at is the topic of hydrogen deficiency. So what happens when you go from an alkane to an alkene to an alkyne, as you insert additional pi bonds, you have to remove hydrogens in order to avoid going over the octet. And that's why we refer to alkenes and alkynes as being hydrogen deficient molecules. Because if we take a look at, say, a two carbon alkane, Something like ethane would be our two carbon alkane. would have the formula CH3CH3 filling back tap for both of those carbons. If we had a two carbon alkene instead, we would see that this molecule is hydrogen deficient because in order to put in the carbon carbon double bond without going over that tap, we have to remove a couple of hydrogen atoms from the alkane in order to do that. So this molecule has a so-called hydrogen deficiency because it has not maxed out the number of hydrogens that's present per carbon atom. To max out the number of hydrogens per carbon would require that there be just carbon-carbon single bonds. Then we get into an even more hydrogen deficient molecule group, which would be the alkyne. And with the alkyne, since we have a carbon-carbon triple bond, in order to get the full octet around each of those carbons, we can only have one hydrogen bonded there. And so therefore, as we look at these, going from left to right, we are dealing with an increasing extent of hydrogen deficiency, as we call it. Also, when we talk about alkenes and alkynes, as well as aromatic compounds, another term that you should be aware of is that we would describe each of these molecules as being unsaturated. Unsaturated means that they do not have the maximum number of hydrogen atoms per carbon. So they're so-called unsaturated. They're not saturated with hydrogens. The same terminology is used for saturated fats versus unsaturated fats. Saturated fats have just carbon-carbon single bonds within the fat molecule, like our alkanes. Unsaturated fats have one or more carbon-carbon double bonds present within the molecule, hence unsaturated. So the term hydrogen deficiency, we can use a little bit more broadly as well in order to predict the number of rings and pi bonds that must be present in a molecule. So we refer to this term index of hydrogen deficiency. And what this is going to tell us is that for each hydrogen atom that we bring into the molecule, we're going to have an increased number of single bonds relative to double bonds, or to say it the other way, if we take out hydrogens from the molecule, we're going to end up with more double bonds being expected. So we can calculate our index of hydrogen deficiency, which is going to give us, in practical terms, that we can actually use for sorting out what reasonable structures for molecules there are based on a molecular formula, index of hydrogen deficiency is going to be equal to the number of rings in a molecule plus the number of pi bonds that are in a molecule. So remember that an alkene molecule has just one alkene group, like up here, 
we would say that has one pi bond, an alkyne has two pi bonds. So we can use this index of hydrogen deficiency to determine how many rings and how many pi bonds there have to be in a molecule, because every time we insert a ring or every time we implement a pi bond, that's going to result in reducing the number of hydrogens that can possibly go into the molecule. So the formula that we use for this, and this would be a good formula to definitely keep in mind, for index of hydrogen deficiencies, we always take two times the number of carbon atoms that we see in the molecular formula, plus two, minus the number of hydrogen atoms that are in the molecular formula, minus the number of halogen atoms that are in the molecular formula, which I'm putting halogen as X, plus the number of nitrogen atoms in the molecule, divide all of that by two. So just a reminder here that X is equal to a halogen. So we're talking there chlorine, fluorine, iodine, bromine, you get the idea. So we can use that formula if we're given a molecular formula for a molecule to determine how many rings and pi bonds that compound has to have. So for example, if we were given the molecular formula C8H16 O4 and we were trying to come up with different possible structures for this molecule, it would be very useful to us to determine the index of hydrogen deficiency because that would tell us automatically how many rings of pi bonds our correct structure must have. It wouldn't tell us specifically what constitutional isomer we're dealing with, but it would lead us down the right road of at least coming up with the correct number of rings and pi bonds. In order to come up with the exact structure of the molecule, we would have to do some more elaborate analytical chemistry experiments to determine the location of all the carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens in this molecule. But at least with the index of hydrogen deficiency, that would get us off to the start of coming up with possible constitutional isomers that are represented by the C6, C8H16O4 molecule. So let's calculate the index of hydrogen deficiency for this compound as our example problem here. So our index of H deficiency, we're just going to use the formula up top, which I do expect you to be familiar with. We'll take two times the number of carbons. The number of carbons is eight plus two minus the number of hydrogens, which is 16 minus the number of halogens. There are no halogens plus the number of nitrogens. There's no nitrogens. Divide all that by two. And you'll notice that oxygen does not come into this equation because oxygen here is not going to impact the hydrogen deficiency of the molecule directly. So we go ahead and do the math there, and we're going to come up with just crunching the numbers here. All right, so looks like our 16 numbers there cancel out. We get 2 by, divided by 2. So our index of hydrogen deficiency is 1 here. This number 1 doesn't tell you whether that index of hydrogen deficiency is due to a ring or due to a pi bond. It just tells you that the molecule must have exactly one ring or pi bond. Not greater than, not less than. This formula that we use for index of hydrogen deficiency does assume, there's an important assumption here, that the molecule we're dealing with is a molecule that has no net formal charge. So do keep that in mind when you're using this formula. That is the caveat to the formula that we've worked out here, is that the molecule has to have no net formal charge. So we can also look at this issue of hydrogen deficiency another way. Remember that hydrogen deficiency is always going to be equal to our number of rings plus pi bonds. And so if we're given a molecular structure, one piece of information that we can provide about that structure is we can discuss its index of hydrogen deficiency. So to determine the index of hydrogen deficiency, you have two options. One is that you could look at the molecular structure and you could count up all the numbers of each of the atoms and you could use this formula. If you have the structure though, that is the long way around. Instead, if you have the structure, what you can do is just go in and count how many rings and how many pi bonds are there in the molecule. So for example, to highlight this, if we take a look at the structure of erythromycin, Erythromycin is an antibiotic molecule. Erythromycin was a natural product that was originally isolated from a bacteria. And the erythromycin molecule 
if we take a look at it, it has a pretty elaborate molecular formula here. I would not want to go in and count out how many carbons, how many hydrogens and oxygens and nitrogens there are in this molecule in order to come up with the index of hydrogen deficiency for this. You could certainly do it, but it's going to take you a long time, and I don't think you have time for that. So index of hydrogen deficiency, if you're asked to calculate that for a molecule like this where you're given the molecular structure, and it's a pretty complex molecule, so you don't really want to count up all of the atoms, all you need to do instead is remember that this is equal to the number of rings plus the number of pi bonds. So go in then and just go through the structure, count up the number of rings and the number of pi bonds. So let's go ahead and do that for this molecule. So I'm going to highlight all of my pi bonds here in yellow. So there's one there, one here. Looking around, do we see any other pi bonds? I do not. Then I'm going to go in and just to keep track of everything, I'm going to highlight all my rings in green. And we've got one giant ring right here. We count it as a single ring. If we can map all the way around it in a continuous path there without making any double rings or having to backtrack or anything like that. So if one giant ring there, we would call that a macro cycle. Macro because it's a really large ring. Ring because it's called cyclo. We have a chair conformer over here. Another chair conformer right here. And so we have those rings. Do we see any other rings in the molecule or any other pi bonds? I do not. So therefore, the index of hydrogen deficiency of this molecule, erythromycin, we can count up three rings plus two pi bonds. Therefore, the index of hydrogen deficiency for this compound is five. When you are calculating the index of hydrogen deficiency, do be careful about looking for abbreviations within structures that represent pi bonds. So for example, if you see a COOH group, you have to remember that that COOH group represents a carbonyl group directly bonded to an OH group. In other words, it represents a carboxylic acid. And so therefore, even though it would be written out quite possibly in your structure COOH, you need to know that there is a pi bond there. And so that's going to contribute one toward your index of hydrogen deficiency. The same would be true for another common group that you will come across, and that other common group is the aldehyde group. So the aldehyde group is commonly abbreviated as CHO. And remember that the CHO group, representing an aldehyde, as I said, is a carbonyl directly bonded to a hydrogen. And so the carbonyl directly bonded to the hydrogen would contribute one index of hydrogen deficiency. And then finally, one other one that I want to make you aware of so that things don't end up being trickier than expected. So if you see the term pH within a molecular structure, what that generally refers to is the phenyl ring. Phenyl meaning P-H-E-N-Y-L, not O-L. O-L would indicate that there's a hydroxy group bonded to an aromatic ring. Y-L indicates that it is an aromatic compound branching off to something. So referring to that phenyl group coming off. And the phenyl group is going to contribute quite a few indexes of hydrogen deficiency here. So the phenyl group has one ring, and it also has incorporated in it three pi bonds, one, two, three. So that gives us a total index of hydrogen deficiency of four. So this is going to have four as the index of hydrogen deficiency that is introduced by having an aromatic ring like this within the molecule, a phenyl group within the molecule. So with that, based on this discussion, you should now be comfortable in looking at structures and determining their index of hydrogen deficiency when you're given the molecular structure. You should also be able to work from a molecular formula in order to calculate the index of hydrogen deficiency based on the formula that we learned.